All right, good evening, ladies. Welcome back to Compound Interesting. This is Emil, and in today's video, we're gonna have another look at CRISPR stock. So the last video I did about CRISPR was five or six months ago, and I've noticed that it's been getting a few more views. And the reason is, is because CRISPR has done pretty well in the last month or so. It's up about 50% since I started talking about it. I was talking about it at about $90. Now it's $150, so that's actually like 60%. And um, the reason being, the reason why it's up, well, we're gonna go through that throughout the video. But I noticed that I was getting some more views, so I thought I'd bring out this video. I tried to look more into CRISPR on YouTube, and there's very little content and videos about it, and all the ones out there, well, a lot of them aren't great. So I thought I'd bring you another v video, bringing you the news about CRISPR. So if you appreciate that, I'd appreciate it if you could hit the like button. It really helps with the algorithm, as you all know. Thank you so much. Subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit the notification bell, because I'm a really small channel. I don't know, I don't play to the YouTube algorithm, so you're gonna have to hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when I'm making a video because it's not gonna be recommended to you. So with all that said, let's get cracking straight into the video. So like I always say, it's more important to know why a stock or a company is important, what they're doing, like what what's useful about it, rather than knowing exactly how it works. So I did, in my last video, I did explain how CRISPR works on a very elementary level. I did physics, so I'm not an expert in this field whatsoever. So that's why I'm not mad into biotechs but i do have a very very i'm very interested in crispr technology but if you want to really go in depth on how it works i'll link a couple of videos now so the one i did is there and then another video from real vision but the tdlr the too long didn't read if you don't want to watch those videos basically what crispr does or what the technology allows for it allows us to cut out people's genes so genes that are ineffective or that have some sort of problem like sickle cell disease or beta thalassemia so it allows us to cut out those incorrect genes and replace them with the correct gene which cures diseases potentially cures diseases and also has a lot has potentially a lot more use cases which i've gone through in that last previous video but they, they include like aqu aquaculture agriculture so anything to do with genes if we, we can actually edit genes to make them how we want them so obviously pretty exciting stuff. So one of the reasons I'm invested in CRISPR, yeah, they're gonna, in the short term, they're gonna potentially cure a lot of diseases and reduce a lot of suffering throughout the world. But there's also that call option on CRISPR technology, like the long tail stuff that is kind of pie in the sky. It's a pipe dream. It's, it's a bit of a pipe dream, like designer babies and modifying agriculture. So it produces more food because human populations are growing every single year and we need more food so we need we need crops that produce more food for less input so there's loads of really really cool things in the long term for crispr so real things things that are really really far out that they're not really focused on right now but there are some potential crazy pipe dreams in the future so that's one of the reasons i like to be invested in it but in the near term we're, we'll, we'll focus more on the near term and by near term i mean five to ten years those other ones are like 10 20 30 years out so yeah, I'm a, I'm a very long-term investor and that's because I'm young, but that's the way I like to invest. Before we go through why exactly CRISPR has risen 60 or, 60 or odd percent recently, uh, I kind of want to explain why I cho chose CRISPR. So there's actually a lot of, like the company CRISPR. So there's CRISPR Therapeutics is the company I'm talking about in this video, but the CRISPR technology is used by a number of companies. So there's not just CRISPR, who's, who's the only person or a company working on CRISPR-Cas9 technology. There's actually other companies as well, like Intellia, sorry, not Intellia, Editas. Yeah, actually, sorry, Intellia, Beam, and Editas. So there's other there's other companies working on this, and because I'm not a expert in biology, I've never studied biology, I have also been putting money into ArcG, so that's ARC Invest's genomic fund or whatever. So I have a lot of money in CRISPR, but I also have some money in ArcG and I probably won't be adding any more to my CRISPR position. I'll probably be more likely to put it into ArcG because unless you're super in the weeds and in the know of this stuff, it's hard to know which company is mo the most likely to succeed unless you really understand what's going on. And unsurprisingly, all this stuff is very, very complicated. Like genetics is really, really complicated, especially for someone who has who's never really studied biology and has no idea what's going on. I'll link one of their their recent presentations, CRISPR's most recent pre presentations. But yeah, like this is what I used to kind of get the research for this video. But just a word of warning, it's quite complicated. And unless you maybe study medicine or something, it might be, it might, a lot of it might go over your head because most of it went over mine. 
So one of the women who discovered CRISPR to Cas9 technology, uh, Jennifer Dudna, actually works at the company. So it's always nice to have a CEO slash founder. So the person who actually discovered CRISPR Cas9 is still working at the company. So she, one of the people who discovered it anyway. The other one is Emmanuel Sharp Sharpentier, but she's still working at the company. And I always like companies that have a, a founder CEO. So you can see like most of the big really successful companies have founder CEOs. The other reason is a little bit more noobish. So the other reason I chose CRISPR-Cas9 as opposed to the other companies is because it's actually the biggest holding in ARC-G. So I have a lot of faith or I really respect ARC Invest's research. So if they think CRISPR therapeutics is going to be the winner over the long term, then I'm I'm gonna trust them over myself in this field because they're they're much better suited in this field. They have a much better understanding than I do about genomics in particular. So one of the main reasons that CRISPR-Cas9 has been doing quite quite nicely recently is because they've had uh, some really nice success in their most recent trials, particularly in sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. So out of three patients who had sickle cell disease, none have experienced another vaso-occlusive crisis. So I don't know what that is, but apparently it's really, really painful. And that's one of the problems that goes with having sickle cell disease. So sickle cell disease is, I'll show you a photo now, but it's essentially when your, your red blood cells are the wrong shape. So they're, like a moon, they're shaped like a moon instead of shaped like the normal red blood cells that you know what they look like. So there's a problem with the shape of your blood cells, your red blood cells, so they all clog up and causes you a lot of, a lot of pain. So CRISPR-Cas9 has really helped with, with people who had sickle cell disease. Out of the three patients, none of them had any more problems there. So here's a little graph. This is one of their patients, and you can see how much their life has improved since the CTX001 infusion. So the VOCs, that's the vaso-occlusive crisis, so the really painful thing. So that's how many times all those red dots are how many times they had to get it done before they got the infusion. And then the gray dots are how many times they had to get blood transfusions, which is also a really horrible process where they give you uh, fresh blood and stop you having your own blood. So that people with sickle cell disease have to get transfusions all the time. So that's obviously not, not even just inconvenient, also probably pretty painful and yeah not not an enjoyable experience whatsoever i'd say i'd imagine and you can see after nine months after they're having pretty much no symptoms or problems anymore so obviously fantastic results for sickle cell disease similarly with beta thalassemia they had really good results so you can see the thalassemic red blood cell so obviously the wrong shape wrong shape as well so a lot of people have that condition Sixty thousand annually and 300,000 with the sickle cell disease annually. Um, but yeah, out of the, I think, seven people who had beta thalassemia, seven of them didn't need blood transfusions anymore after the process. And we discussed how bad blood transfusions were. So this is quite a big problem. 300,000 people born every single year and 60,000 with uh, the beta thalassemia. So obviously that's a big problem. However, that's only the tip of the iceberg with CRISPR technology and the amount of the different things that they could potentially cure. So that's kind of what you're looking, that's what you're looking out for if you're investing in CRISPR. There's, there's a lot more to it than just the, just these two diseases. Potentially they could cure a lot, lot more. So that's the hope with CRISPR technology. And it's really encouraging to see that they've, that it's actually working for these two diseases and will eventually, hopefully and probably be getting rolled out as a, a cure for these diseases and not just a, not just a, not just a treatment for the symptoms of the, the disease, an actual cure for the disease, which is a, there's a big difference between that. Like blood transfusions don't cure your disease. They just deal with the symptoms, the horrible symptoms that go along with having those diseases. But CRISPR could, it's looking like CRISPR could actually cure these diseases for good. But before you go crazy buying the stocks, maybe we should just talk about a couple of risks. Now, obviously this is a highly speculative company. It doesn't really have very much revenue whatsoever and its revenue is nowhere near consistent and don't even get us started about earnings they're not you're not looking at a kind of a value company here you're looking at a spec play this is a spec company even though it's 10 billion dollars it's a spec play because it's not really earning very much money it's although some of the trials have been successful there's still a lot of, of the technologies that, that still needs to yet be proved so it's not a sure thing whatsoever and with a 10 billion dollar market cap it's 
it's, it's a bit pricey now. Well, it's not pricey f for its potential, but it does come with a lot of risks. It's not completely, it's not a sure thing whatsoever. Another one of the risks is obviously the enormous amount of competition in the space. So I've already mentioned that, but there's other competitors in the space using this technology and similar technologies. Like there's CRISPR Cas9, which CRISPR Therapeutics uses, and then there's CRISPR Cas12, which is very similar, but might be better uh, for everything, but potentially it's just better for a few things. So we're not sure which is gonna be the winner in the long run. So that's why I like personally investing in ArcG, so I get exposure to the best companies in this space without having to pick, put all my eggs into one basket. Another risk is in my previous video, so I mentioned this before, after my video, but I did have a, not a mistake, but something that came to light after I made the video. So in the, that previous video, <coughs> what ARK Invest have been talking about. So basically there's monogenetic diseases and there's polygenetic diseases. So monogenetic diseases mean there's a problem with one of your gene, so monogene. So there is a problem with one of your gene, whereas polygenetic diseases mean there's problems with a multitude of your genes. So at the moment, monogenetic diseases is what CRISPR is looking to cure and to help with. So that's the likes of what we talked about, sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia, as well as a few others and that's a $2 trillion opportunity, according to ARK Invest. However, like I mentioned, that's only the tip of the iceberg. So ARK Invest, they said, that's a $2 trillion opportunity, just the monogenetic diseases. And they said, out of all diseases, only 2% of diseases are monogenetic. The other 98% of diseases are polygenetic. So when you think about $2 trillion, which is an enormous total addressable market in the first place, $2 trillion to solve monogenetic diseases, which CRISPR is looking like it could potentially do, and it's looking like it has a good chance of being able to cure a lot of those diseases. What if CRISPR can solve all these, or cure all of the polygenetic diseases? What's the total addressable market then? Yeah, and obviously that would be absolutely enormous, and it's one of the reasons I got very, very excited about CRISPR stock, and I put quite a large amount of money into it. However, when I kept researching the company, I kind of found that this isn't as likely as it seems and it's going to be a lot, lot more difficult. Like the monogenetic is really what they're looking at for the moment. Polygenetic is quite a, quite a bit more of a pipe dream than ARK Invest thought or more than ARK Invest made it seem. So the total addressable market in the disease space mightn't be as big as I originally forecasted. So just to make you aware of that if you watch that other video. But I'm not gonna ruin all the fun. There is still plenty of opportunity for CRISPR. They're also working in cancer, so they're working at curing cancer or helping with cancer. So here's just a little description of what CRISPR is doing in regards to cancer. So CRISPR is independently developing off-the-shelf cell therapies using allogenetic chimeric antigen receptor T-cells to cure, cure B-cell cancers. If successful, the company will effectively revolutionize the CAR T's therapy space since the current since the current approved cell therapies are autologous, meaning they have to be manufactured every time using a patient's own cells. So they're really so they're really changing the game here. So instead of having to manufacture the cell therapies every time using the patient's own cell, they're kind of they've come up with a way to potentially mass produce these cell therapies or these CAR T therapies and with much lower cost. So this will increase their adoption by both providers and payers. And has it has demonstrated already clear anti-tumor activity for this therapy in, in trials with lymphoma. But basically it's gonna be a major long-term revenue driver for CRISPR. So how great would that be investing and owning into a company that's not only curing an enormous amount of diseases, but potentially also curing certain forms of cancer or potentially cancer completely. So I'd love to be an owner into a company that did that. And not only that, there's all the extra stuff that's that's a, a very minor possibility, but that could c come to fruition. And what which gives CRISPR such an enormous total addressable market. So the, the likes of designer babies, which personally I think will be so, so normalized. If, if this comes to, if this technology becomes, um, if this technology becomes available, then I'm sure loads of people will get designer babies and it'll just become such a normal thing. And it will cost a lot of money if I want my kid to be smart or not to have any diseases or be immune to certain diseases, etc., etc. 
yeah, that's going to cost a lot of money and, and obviously will mean that CRISPR would grow into an enormous, enormous company. However, that's a long, long way out. But we also have the likes of aquaculture. So that would be uh, genetically modifying fish, so in fish farms, to make them resistant to certain diseases. So the fish you're eating are less like gross and full of toxins and, and whatever. And also with agriculture, making uh, more crops yield more food for humans. So it takes up less space and causes less damage to the environment overall. So there's a lot of enormous benefits with crispr cas technology potentially in the future. So as I mentioned, there's not really much point looking at their revenue numbers or trying to come up with a fair value for this company because their numbers aren't very useful. However, one number that is useful is the number of cash on their balance sheet and they're very low debt. So they have $1.4 billion in cash, which is quite a lot for a $10 billion company. So that means they can continue burning cash for quite a while before they run out of money, which hopefully they don't, won't have to, but they're, it's not gonna go bankrupt anytime soon and they have very low debt, which is great to see. But yeah, there's not really much point in trying to value their company by looking at, the, at their numbers, but it's better to look at to value their company by the amount of value that they're producing for the world and for the amount of value that they will produce for the world. So that's like the more value you produce for the world, that's highly correlated to the amount of value in dollar terms that that company will receive in the future. So I think CRISPR, or I think CRISPR therapeutics will create an enormous amount of value for the world, cure oh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people of diseases potentially in the future. So that's something that will completely make hundreds of thousands of people's lives so much better. So that's an enormous amount of value. So people will be likely, and governments will be likely to pay a lot of money for that technology. So CRISPR could make a lot of, an enormous amount of money in the future, as well as all the other reasons that we discussed. So I think the discoverers of CRISPR Cas9, they also got, got their Nobel Prize, so well deserved for that. Jeff, Je Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Charpentier. They got their Nobel Prize and that also helped with the stock price recently. Um, but now the question you've all, all be waiting for, am I buying CRISPR stock? For me, no, I'm not buying CRISPR stock. The reason being is I already have quite a large position. However, if I had no CRISPR stock at all, I would definitely be buying CRISPR stock even at these prices. The opportunity is enormous. And a 60% rise is kind of nothing when you're dealing with a spec stock. When you're investing in a spec stock, like you should only be really investing in speculative companies if you think they have absolutely enormous total addressable markets. Otherwise, there's no point taking that much risk. So the only the only point taking that much risk is if there's enormous upside. And with CRISPR, I, I definitely think there is enormous upside. But like I mentioned, obviously it's a speculative company. So a speculative risky investment, don't put all your money into it. And if you don't want to put all your money into it, probably better to go with ArcG, Arc Genomic, in the ET ETF or whatever. So if you enjoyed the video, please smash the thumbs up button. I hope you enjoyed this research and I hope you learned something. Um, don't go crazy going out buying the stock. I'm not a financial advisor, etc., etc. And oh my God, how could I forget? I forgot to mention Bitcoin finally fa passed $20,000 and now it's at like $23,000. Absolute celebrations. Popped a few champagne bottles myself. So if you if you're not a follower of mine, I'm a Bitcoin is actually one of is actually my biggest position now. So Bitcoin is my biggest position and probably my highest conviction investment. So if you want to learn more about Bitcoin, I'll probably leave the video up there. But I really really hope you enjoy this video. I hope you learned something, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so so much for watching. Cheers.